Good morning, Crestview. How is everyone today? Glad that you're here with us in the service. What was that? Glad that you're here with us in the service, and we're glad that you're here with us online. We're going to praise the Lord today. We're going to enter his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts. All right? Are you, are you thankful for something? Boy. Okay, let's stand up and let's sing this song and just really sing it out to him. All right? Everybody sing. Here we go.
Now you notice in there it says, let us be prophets. There are two kinds of prophets that are mentioned in the Bible. One is foretelling, foretelling what's going to be happening in God's kingdom. The second kind is forthtelling, sharing the gospel with those around us. So let us all be prophets today to share God's word, to share God's kindness, his grace. That's what that's about. And this is what we need to sing about right here. The splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles. way. a great song of praise that just says it all let's pray together and let's thank him for being our God the name above all names you just pray right there for just a second thank him for what he's done in your life and what he's doing in your life just do that right now sing these praises. We get the privilege of singing these praises to you. We thank you so much, Lord, 
for being a God that listens, a God that cares, a God that loves, a God that knows each one of us personally. Wow, I don't know how that works, God, but you got it. You're the one in charge. Thank you. We give you this time of praise and prayer and worship and of studying your Bible to know more how you want us to live our lives. Be with our pastor now as he brings the word to us. You just fill him up. Just fill him with your spirit. Help him to say exactly what you want him to say today. And help us to truly listen with our hearts to know what your spirit is saying through him to us. Help us to react, to respond, to do what you want us to do in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in the rest of this service. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. Good morning and welcome to Crestview. Whether you're joining us online or in person, we're glad you're here. If you're new to Crestview, stop by Crestview information in the comments and grab a free tumbler and specialty coffee on us. We would love to connect with you and answer any questions you may have. You can also check out the Crestview update, an email that goes out on Monday and Wednesday, or download it from our website, crestview.church. On Sunday, May 29th, join us for worship at 8.30 or 10 o'clock. Our 11.30 service will not meet that day, and childcare will be available for birth through kindergarten only. Students and kids zone will not meet that day. Now grab your Bible and message notes. Let's take a moment to pray and prepare our hearts for this week's message. Good morning. Wanted to say happy Mother's Day today and uh, want to wish everybody happy Mother's Day. Uh, today I'm dressed a little casual. I've been on vacation the last week and that's not the reason, but this is the first time in 20 years that I thought I left a suit up here at the church and I didn't. And so I realized that about 15 minutes ago. It takes about seven minutes to get to my house and seven minutes to get back and then to change and the math just didn't work for me. So we're going to have casual today. Just wanted to let you know if any of you just happened to notice that today. Well, we have been on vacation. We got in late uh, last night from our uh, vacation, had a family vacation. And it was interesting because the vacation kicked off with my two daughters having an argument. Now, I know this never happens in your family, but what happened was uh, one of my daughters, and I'm going to keep everybody anonymous to protect the innocent and not so innocent in this situation. And basically, one daughter got another daughter to help them with a project. It was a, actually going to do a wedding, the video uh, for a wedding. And along the way, some things got miscommunicated, some things got forgotten. Um, let's just say, without getting into too many details, that basically the communication wasn't great. So there's a little bit of an argument that was going on as we were leaving for vacation. Now, you know, it's interesting because in a family, when you think about that, you know, you want your children, no matter how old they are, to get along. You want them to, you know, not be arguing, everybody be acting good, be acting nice. Now, why, why do you want that? Well, because you love them, you want them to get along. It's just kind of how you want things to go. But things do happen. Now, what we're going to see today in the passage we're going to look at on this Mother's Day, we're going to look at basically in 1 Peter, this passage that talks about the family you always wanted. To talk about family life is what we're going to look at today. We continue our series through 1 Peter. We're kind of jumping over to chapter 3 today, so we're not exactly going in order if you're keeping up with that. But this fits really well for Mother's Day, and so we wanted to talk about this passage that, that focuses in on family. And so we're going to look at family today. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at this scripture because I think it applies two different ways. 
It applies, first of all, to our family that we have, our family. It also applies to the church family. Because that's one of the great terms I think we use around here, and it's very true, that we have a church family. We're supposed to act like a family as a church. So kind of, we're going to apply it both ways today and look at what Scripture says about this. So let's look at this theme, and I want to, this really, as we go through this series, I want to keep reminding you of this theme of 1 Peter. And it is that we're going to face storms. This series is called Conversations in the Storm. There's going to be difficulties. There's going to be hard times, especially in relationships, especially spiritually, especially just in life. And so here's the theme throughout the book of 1 Peter. It's this, that in any situation, we can respond like Jesus. That no matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it is, we can respond like Jesus. We won't always do that, but we can. And 1 Peter is going to remind us, hey, think about how you're responding in this situation. So I want to ask you to turn to 1 Peter. 1 Peter is six books from the end of your Bible. So if you go back to the left, um, six books from the end of your Bible, you're going to get to 1 Peter. So we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 3 today. And we're going to look, like I said, about family. And we're going to begin with some basic family ground rules. Okay? So let's pick this passage up beginning in verse 8. Of First Peter chapter three. Here's what it says. Finally, all of you should be of one mind, sympathize with each other, love each other as brothers and sisters, be tender-hearted and keep a humble attitude. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. Now, let's kind of go through this passage. Back in verse 8, it says, all of you should be of one mind. Now, if you remember, uh, we talked about this. Sean mentioned this. This is something that is we have to keep in mind as we go through 1 Peter. All of you refers to these Christians that have been scattered because of persecution. Rome is killing Christians. Christians have kind of just scattered all over the known world at this time, just running for their lives, literally. And so he, he, when he says all of you, he's talking about these Christians that are kind of running for their lives. That's kind of their situation. And he basically says, remember how much God loves you. But keep growing. You need some ground rules. You need it like a checklist. And what he gives us here in these two verses is sort of a checklist for our family for our church family, and so let's look at these, and here's the first one, live in harmony with each other. Now, this is talking about what you need to do in your relationships, in your family, and in our church family, we pursue unity. Now, when I was growing up, my family had this saying, and the saying was, all for one and one for all. I heard that for years and years and years as I was growing up. The idea was that we need to be unified. We need to be of one mind. Now, the thing is, most people don't have any problem with being of one mind if it's their mind. Y'all all be like my mind. You know, that's kind of how it works. But this is an idea of we have unity even though we're real different. Even though we have different backgrounds, even though we have different situations in life we have gone through, different experiences, different viewpoints, different attitudes, all those things can be very, very different. So how can we have unity? The Bible is going to point us to we are one mind. How can you be of one mind? Because you have, it is to be in the mind of Christ. It is to have the mind of Christ. To go, okay, you think this and I think that, but bottom line is we are one in Christ. And it's this something that outweighs everything else. It is that we are one in Christ. That outweighs everything else. Now, as a church family here at Crestview, you know, one of the things about here, 
we, we admit very easily and quickly that we all have messy lives. We, we just all do. We definitely do. But in a church that follows Jesus, we're going to have people of different cultures, different backgrounds, different perspectives, all those kinds of things. But our common hope is in Jesus, and that's to be our focus. Jesus, the Bible, never envisioned a church where everybody thought the same about everything. Okay, let's just, you know what that's called? If everybody thinks the same thing about everything, you know what that's called? That's called a cult. It's not called a church. It's that in all our different backgrounds, in all our different heritages, all those different things, we are one in Christ. And that is to be the focus Live in harmony with one another. You see, the bottom line is this. The point is this. The relationship matters more than any issue. Now, obviously, you've got to stand for truth and you've got to stand for God's direction. But when it comes down to it, the relationship is more important than an issue. And so that's talking about the harmony that we need to have. And don't get so caught up in the issues that you forget we are one in Christ. Live in harmony with each other. First thing on the checklist, here's the second thing. Be sympathetic to each other. This is where we're empathetic, where we're understanding, where we try to understand where somebody else is coming from. Now, it doesn't mean we agree with them because we may not ever agree with them. And they might even be wrong. But we try to understand their situation and where somebody is coming from. And it's be sympathetic to each other. Now, it's it's real key that we do that. And this is how it works. Uh, Years ago, there was two people that I knew. They became Christians. They actually began dating each other. And then they got married. Great couple, great people. I knew her a little bit better than I knew him, but, um, you know, they were going toward this marriage. We're going to get married. I said got married. They were going to get married, and then a week before the wedding, she called it off, and, you know, everybody was just kind of scratching their heads going, what happened? So I ran into her, and I asked her the question. I said, everything okay? And she kind of said, yeah, everything's okay. And I said, you know, I I think I I said what everybody was thinking, which was, did he do something? I mean, because, you know, I don't know why I defaulted to that, but I did. Did he do something? She goes, no, no, he's great. No, nothing happened. I go, what, what, I mean, why did you, what happened? She goes, well, here's what you need to understand. She goes, my mother has been married and divorced six times. And when it came down to it, I don't think I can trust any man. And when it came down to a week before the wedding, I just thought I couldn't trust him. He didn't give me any reason not to trust him. I just didn't think I could trust him. Now, what is that? That is brokenness that needs to get healed, that needs to be addressed, but... If you just saw what happened from the outside, you go, what in the world's going on here? What's the deal? What's happening? But there's a whole story there. Let me tell you, we all got stories. We all got different things that cause us to do what we do and how we do what we do and how we react in certain ways. And this is simply saying be sympathetic enough to try to understand where somebody's coming from. You see, the problem is if we're so busy trying to win an argument, we lose people. But we are to win people. We are to be sympathetic. Now, we may end up going, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right. But we care about the person. Very much that's kind of the focus of the second ground rule. All right, here's a third basic family ground rule. It's be tenderhearted to each other. This is where you're warm, compassionate towards somebody. Uh, and, uh, this is not being fake nice. You know, in Texas, we do fake nice, okay? Bless his heart, he's such an idiot. I mean, you know, we kind of put the two things together. You know, it's kind of like we're kind of fake nice. 
You know, this is not fake nice, this is real nice. That we actually try to care about somebody, and we might even try to share their pain. They go through a hard time, we might even step in and try to say, how can I help? How, how can I help you through that? How can I pray for you? How can I make a difference for you? And so, it, it comes down to our heart. Now, it says in Scripture, and, we, and it's part of this ground rule, be tender-hearted. All right? Well, now, what's the opposite of tender-hearted? Hard-hearted. You ever been hard-hearted? You ever done that? I have. You know, there's times that we can get hard-hearted. And when we have this hard heart, let me tell you, it's going to hurt any relationship in our family. It's going to be something where we shut somebody out in our life. And it's always going to make the relationship much more difficult. Hard-hearted. Let's talk. No. Hey, what can I do to make it up? Nothing. What is that? That's hard-hearted. You want to have a date night? Who, where do you want to go? I don't know, but I just don't want to go with you. Hard-hearted. You see, it's when we go, I don't care. See, you know, hate is one thing or anger is one thing. A hard heart goes beyond that, and it is, I don't care. And it is to make sure you don't go to that place where you cut people off in your relationship. And this could be in your family. And, you know, there's a lot of family things that happen, and it's hard to um, keep that relationship going. But it's saying, don't let your heart get hard. You may have to set up boundaries. You may have to say, this is going to happen, but this isn't going to happen. You may have to do that in a relationship, especially in a family. But don't get hard-hearted. Don't get hard-hearted. You know, sometimes we have a hard heart, and sometimes we have a broken heart. Sometimes we have a fearful heart. And the Bible says all kinds of things about our heart because your spiritual health and your relational health and your relationships that you have with family are all going to be affected by your heart, by the heart that you have towards somebody else. And here's what we need to understand. We need a tender heart, a tender heart. And here's the thing, the Bible's very clear, God wants to have access to your heart. And we have jurisdiction over our heart. You understand that? Spiritually, over and over again, in fact, one of the great prayers of the Bible is that we come to God and go, God, please change my heart. Sometimes we got to do that, especially when it comes to family. God, I feel this way and I've got a hard heart, I need to come to you and God, please change my heart. Again, I may still have to have boundaries. I may still have to, you know, all that. It still can be in place. But don't let it push you to having a hard heart because we ask God to give us his heart. Now, what kind of heart does God have toward us? A tender heart. A tender heart. And so we just need to be tender hearted toward each other. Very important ground rule. Here's the fourth one that's in this list that we just read, this checklist. Be humble around each other. Now let me apply this one to church. You know, we have three different services and three different styles of service. None of them are the same. You may or may not even know that. But we have three different music styles in our services on Sunday morning, we have different times, all different, and we have to realize it's not about my service, it's not about my seat, it's not about my favorite song, it's not about my preferences, that can't be what we do. And you can say, well, wait a minute, are you saying that you kind of trying to make it easy for people to go to church? Are you trying to cater to people? And the answer is, absolutely we are. We want people to be able, and we just give some choices. It's just what we do. We don't want to make it hard. 
So how's humble look? It's a mindset that maybe today is not about me. Maybe it's not about me. Maybe it's not about how I see things. Maybe it's about how that maybe I need to encourage somebody. Maybe I need to come to church, whether I'm online, whether I am in this room right now, or in one of the services, and I need to think about how I can pray for someone, help somebody, make a different serve in some sort of way, all those kinds of things. Humble is simply putting the needs of someone else ahead of your own. And humble says also, I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to reconsider and learn. You know what a humble mind says? And this can be in family or in church. I might be wrong. I'm willing to be wrong. This is what I think, but I might be wrong. And do you realize this? Nobody's always right. Nobody's always right. Humble means I'm willing to be wrong. Here's the fourth, uh, fifth thing that's on the checklist for basic family ground rules. Argue differently with each other. It says there, do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. Repay evil with blessing. Now, a couple things here is that it's kind of assuming you're going to have insults and you're going to have evil towards you. And that could be in your family. That could be even in church. Now, here's the thing. The moment in church that we only allow holy, perfect people to be here, to watch online, I can't be a part of that, and you can't be either. So that's not really the goal. That's not really the direction here. But it is that we have a different reaction. Now, some of you are counterpunchers in your relationships. In other words, if someone does something bad to you, all right, but I'm going to do something bad to you. I'm going to react to you because you started it, and you're kind of a counterpuncher in this. This might be your habit. They say something, you say something. The Bible says, don't do that. Don't do that. What are you supposed to do instead? Bless them. Have blessing toward them. And it's like family, you, you give more grace. You see, be like Jesus who, when confronted with evil, did not do evil toward evil. He didn't have that kind of response at all. Remember the theme, in any situation we can respond like Jesus. Respond like Jesus, live like Jesus, and you will inherit a blessing. I want us to watch together a video, and this is, one, this is Liz Abbott, and she's going to tell a little bit about her story on this Mother's Day. We want her to kind of talk about her own experience as a mother, so let's watch this together right now. Trying to teach our kids about Jesus, about right now the easy things, but in the future thinking about how to teach them the hard things. And the second thing is, is not only teaching them and, and saying it and to them and telling them, but living it and being an example to them. In our life group, we were doing a study called Weird. And what we were learning about was that if you don't teach your kids, the world will. And our four-year-old is already starting to watch YouTube and she's four going on 24. And so that really spoke to me that we don't teach our kids both the easy things and the hard things, the world will. Social media will, the internet will, all kinds of sources that we don't want them to see and, and hear will. The moment we started having babies, feeling those little lives in my belly um, and watching that whole process and watching my four-year-old get to see that process is incredible. It makes me feel God every day to see them get up and learn. Um, when we were trying to get pregnant the first time, we had a miscarriage at 12 weeks, and that was really hard. Um, and I heard a video come on. It was on CMT, which we never watched, and it was, Thy will be done. And it really calmed me down um, and gave me hope that God had plans for us to be parents and to, to 
you know, go forth and multiply and do all those things that he wants us to do that I didn't feel like I was going to be capable of doing after losing a child. And it also gave me a perspective that most moms have been through that. And so it gave me a lot of empathy and, and towards other moms that had had miscarriages. And that's when God really showed me just giving life to a child is amazing, let alone all the blessings he, he gives us with them. When those little eyes look up and say, Mommy, I love you. Will you snuggle with me? Mommy, come play monster trucks with me. Mommy, will you color with me? I'm trying to embrace all of those little moments because I know they won't be there forever. And I know they're little gifts from God to remind us to slow down and pay attention to what's important. You know, the simplest memories have the biggest joy. Seeing things I love through their eyes and seeing them love those things is even better than me experiencing them. So really the, the simplest memories bring a lot of joy. What we just read in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 says, If we do what God wants us to do, we will be receiving a blessing. He grants us a blessing. He does it in all kinds of different ways. But it is what God wants to do if we will just love Him and follow His direction and purpose for us. I want us to look at uh, John 13, 34, and 35. And here's what it says. A new commandment I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Our Heavenly Father wants us to get along. I mean, I think that's why groups were very important. Uh, in that moment of groups, uh, that is an opportunity for folks to support each other, encourage each other, pray for each other. You know, the group that we're a part of that sometimes meets up here at the church, sometimes in our home on, on Monday nights, uh, we have experienced a lot of stuff together. We've been together for a few years now. Uh, we have been in, in the emergency room. There's been struggles. There's been tragedy. There's been difficulty. There's been struggles. And through all that, we help each other. And there's been conflict. And in all those things, we are to learn and grow and to do what God would want us to do. Follow the ground rules. God says you will inherit. You'll be granted a blessing. Now, here's what I want to do. I want you to take a look. You've got your outline there. I want you to look at that checklist right now. We're going to do something that I'm going to ask you to do. My, I want us to pray. And here in the middle of the message, the message is not over. Don't get too excited. And we're, But I want to ask you to do something and to pray my favorite way to pray, which is we're going to pray out loud all together at the same time. All right, so here's how it's going to work. I want you to look at this checklist, and I want you to say and ask God here in just this moment, God, help me with that one. You pick out yours. I don't know what yours is. But you look at that list and go, God, help me figure out how I can be tenderhearted toward them. All right? So I want you just to pray that prayer out loud. We're going to do it all together at the same time. Out loud. Did I say out loud? Okay. Just want to make sure you got the out loud part. All right. So here we go. On the count of three, we're just going to pray. And just take this time to ask God to help you with a simple prayer with whatever you feel like on this checklist that God would want you to focus in on for your life. So here we go. Let's pray. One, two, three. Let's pray. God, I do help pray that you would help us because when it comes to family, when it comes to our church family, help us in our relationships to live out your ground rules. They are for our blessing and for our good and for us to make a difference in your name. 
Help us to do that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So continuing on in chapter 3, let's talk about how to get along in the family. And let's look at the next couple of verses. This is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. And here's what those verses say. Whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. Now, there's two things that God promises. We talked about the checklist, and now we have some promises. Here's the first promise, and it's this. God will help us love life. Now, how many of you are not loving life lately? Well, there is your clear path to how you can truly love life. God says if we obey him, you can love life. He will help us with that. The second promise is you'll see good days. You know, there's not a lot of people that say, oh, I see a lot of good days ahead. You know, especially you think about nationally and that kind of viewpoint. There's not a lot of that going on in many different ways at all. But if you want to love your life and see good days, you've got to live differently. And you need to change into God's plan here that we've been looking at. And it, don't fall into the trap of going, well, when this changes over here, then everything, I'll change. No, we're supposed to change. It starts with us and God. It doesn't, like when, when they do different or when this is different, then, no, no. It's us and God. It's us doing what God would want us to do. So let's look at a couple things that are mentioned in this passage. And the first one is this. That if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. I just made that up. Do you all like that? I just just made that up. Actually, that's very biblical. Uh, We just read the passage that talks about that. And it truly is a biblical truth there. It's what Scripture is saying. So you keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceitful speech. Bible says, you know what you're doing when you do that? You're just digging a hole for yourself. And so Peter is saying, okay, I'm telling you this because it's going to be better for you. You're going to love life. You're going to have good days. Don't go down that road at all. Here's what it says in Proverbs 12, 18. Some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Now, you and I are doing one or the other all the time. Cutting remarks or we're bringing healing. And our words are very powerful when it comes to our relationships and when it comes to family. Family sometimes has a hard time getting over something you said 10 years ago. Words are very powerful. So what we're talking about here is a very important lesson. And, you know, we have this little saying about, you know, if you can't say anything nice, but it's actually biblical. Here's a next principle that we have from this passage is this. Constantly turn away from evil and do good. Constantly turn away from evil and do good. It's basically this. We have to constantly be in this process. It's not like a one-time deal. It just needs to be part of our everyday deal. I've got to turn. I want to do that. I want to be selfish. I want to do my way. I want to say this. I want to straighten them out but I'm going to go this other way because I have to constantly turn from this wrong path to God's path. And it's kind of like counseling. Counseling really is very basic. Counseling is three parts. Number one, what's the problem? Part two is, what does God say about the problem? Part three is, will you do what God says about the problem? Real, Real simple. Counseling is very simple, actually. Which one is the hardest of those three? Overall, I would say number three. Will you do it? There's sometimes that it simply comes down to we need to go, God says stop it, so I need to stop it. God says start it, I need to start it. I just need to do what God wants me to do. That we constantly turn away from evil and we do good. And then, be a creator of peace, not tension. Seek peace. So how would you self-rate on that? Are you the kind of person that when you're in the situation, when you're in the relationship, you bring peace? Or do you bring drama? 
And I, I just want to give you a little clue. If it seems like every one of your relationships, especially in family, are drama, you are drama. You are drama. Or they are drama. That's not the path God has. The path God has for us is that we would be a creator of peace. That is what God has for us. Let's take a look. Now, there is a loophole here a little bit, so let me talk about it. A biblical loophole in Romans 12, 17 through 19. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Okay, so that's the direction. Okay, just what we've been saying. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For as written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. And, and I love it that it says, if it's possible. This means you've done your best. I've done the best that I can do. I, it doesn't seem to be possible. Then you, what do you do? You leave it for God. You still don't step in and go, I'll be God. You leave it for God. You let God handle it at that point. But there is this kind of reality of sometimes you go, I don't think it's possible. And so I'm going to have to turn it over to God. Let God handle that. Look what it says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. Continuing on our passage in 1 Peter, it says, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, why does all this that we've been talking about this morning, looking at this passage from chapter 3, why does all this matter to God? Because God's watching. God is watching. And he says he watches over the righteous. Now, righteous doesn't mean perfect. Righteous means someone who's trying to walk with God. Who has See, God is to have the direction of our life. He doesn't have the perfection of our life. We are not perfect, but we walk with God. That's talking about, that's kind of a definition of righteous here. And so the bottom line is, we have a Heavenly Father who loves us. We're made in His image. He has a plan. He has a purpose for us. Along the way, we're going to need to make a lot of course corrections along the way. We'll get off track. We'll go the wrong way. But if we hear him and continue to work out what he wants us to work out, if we continue to talk to him and he says, no, don't go that way, go this other way, he will do that because he loves us so much. He watches over the righteous. Second thing here is, is that God actively listens to our prayers. You know, these verses that we've read this morning are a quote from Psalm 34. And Psalm 34 is basically a psalm about walking with God. What you have, what we've looked at, this checklist and how to get along in family, all those kinds of things are God saying in his word, this is how you walk with me. And I want you to walk with me. And then a lot of that's going to be played out in our relationships. And so God actually hears and God actually listens. And the third part of that is God will stand against those who do wrong. That's the last part of verse 12. Now, I don't know what all that means. God stands against those who do wrong. I don't know what that means totally. I know I don't want that to happen to me, though. I don't want God to stand against me. That's not a good thing. It's not something that I think anybody should want. And so what we got to realize is so many people play at religion. And what I mean by that is they go, well, it's my life, my decision, my problem. I'll deal with it. And I'm basically the God of my life. If things get really out of control, I'll turn to God. Big G God. But see, God's going, okay, but if it's all mine, God goes, then it's my problem. I will step in. I will direct you. I'll show you which way to go. I'll help you through it. But we kind of short-circuit that if we go, it's my, it's what I think and what I want to do. 
and we don't do his plan, we don't do his purpose when we do that. Let me finish with this, and, and let me read you the statement that I think is great about the church family. Okay, I think it applies to our church, any church family, but I want us to mainly talk about Crestview, and here's a statement. If we can't be the church that represents the type of family that everyone has always wanted, then we aren't doing church right. Let me say that one more time. If we can't be the church that represents the type of family that everyone has always wanted, then we aren't doing church right. I love being part of this church family because we admit we're messy. We admit we don't have it all together, but we also realize that God does have a plan and he has a purpose and we need to find his path. So it's that, yeah, we are messy, but God doesn't leave us where we are. He has a path for us to take toward him. So both parts are real, real important to that. So we take God's word seriously that he wants to bring life change to us because he does. Now, we are all on this journey. Now, what we've looked at today, this is a family talk, okay? Your own family and also church family. All this applies, I think, to both. And so what we need to do is we need to work on in our family what we need to work on. And some of us on this Mother's Day, there's some things we need to realize I need to work on with the family that I've been given. And then our church family, we also realize we need to keep creating a place where anyone who checks us out online or watches online or attends our church or participates in our church is part of our church, that we live this out, all that we've looked at today. And we depend on God's word that leads us to God's way. And I just want to finish with this because remember, remember, remember the importance of your heart. Because that's what God really cares about. If we follow his direction, it's very clear what kind of heart. You can have a broken heart. You can have a fearful heart. You can have a hard heart. But what God wants you to have is a tender heart. When you do not have a tender heart, you are not following God's path in that moment. It's what God has for us. And I wanted you to take a look at, on your outline, there's this uh, next step today. What you've got there is a blank. And what I want to ask you to do is what would you put in the blank? What would God have for you today? It might be about your heart. It might be about a family relationship. It might be about a church family relationship. What is it God has a family plan and what is your next step today? What is it that God has told you about, tapped you on the shoulder about? What is your next step? You also see information there in your message notes about the reading plan for this week, enjoying the gift of relationships. It's a five-day plan, plan on the Bible app. And then you'll see the blog and podcast for this week that you can access off the web page. I want us to just take a time right now. We're just going to have a time of silence. If you would bow your heads with me and use this time to figure out what goes in your blank. What is your next step? And then I'm going to close this in a time of prayer. So let's just take this time right now to do that. God, we thank you for your word that is very real. And on this Mother's Day, Father, I, I pray that you would just show us what is our next step. What we've talked about today in family relationships is so important. And God, help us to care about the relationship more than the winning, the argument or the situation. And, and God, it's just uh, we need your direction to navigate how we do boundaries, how we deal with certain situations, 
There's a lot of challenging things that we need your help with. But through all of us, Lord, all of anything that we deal with, I pray you'd help us to have the heart you'd want us to have. And not get to the place where we have a hard heart, but instead we would have the kind of heart that you have toward us, a heart that is tender, full of mercy and grace. God, I pray that you would help us follow your family plan for us. And all this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. We're going to sing this song of commitment. If you have a commitment you'd like to make today about your own relationship with Jesus Christ, maybe to become part of this church family, I'll be here at the front to meet you. So let's stand. Let's sing together right now. Precious blood I shed that thou my strength some be and quicken from the dead I gave I gave my life for thee what hast thou given for me I gave What hast thou given for me? My Father's house of light, my glory circled throne. I left for earthly night and wandering sad and lone. I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left aught for me? I left, I left it all for thee, hast thou left aught for me? I suffered much for thee. tongue can tell of bitterest agony to rescue thee from hell I've borne I've borne it all for thee what hast thou borne for me I've borne I've What hast thou borne for me? Thank you. You can be seated. We're going to receive our uh, offering right now. You have an opportunity to turn in that connection card. Let us know how we can pray for you. Any other information you'd like to let us know about right there. So our usher's going to uh, come forward and get ready to pass these buckets by you. You can turn that connection card in. Also, obviously, your offering. Thank you so much for your generosity. We are kicking off in the month of May our 4 by Faith offering, so let's watch this video together right now about 4 by Faith. Hello, Crest you. I want to talk to you about our May 4 by Faith offering. Your past generosity to our 4 by Faith offering has allowed us to make great progress in improving our online services. We've been able to build a new state-of-the-art production studio and install a fiber optic network. And as a result, the quality and stability of our live stream has, has drastically improved. And we've been able to provide a higher quality in-house worship experience. I mean, we hear stories almost every week of people who began watching our services online and are now worshiping with us in person. And this has happened because many of you invited friends, family, hey, hey check out the Crestview Worship online, and they kind of had their first experience there. So this May, we have an opportunity to continue to make improvements to our worship center and stage lighting, which is going to just take it up another level of that quality and effectiveness. We just want to get it all done. So for our online and our in-house worship experience, as we just are seeking to share Jesus in the best way possible. 
We're also hoping to replace our worship center chairs as part of this special offering, as well as to make some other necessary upgrades to our facilities. And in addition, 10% of everything you give to this Forward by Faith offering in May will go to local mission partners. I encourage each of you to take the next steps of praying and giving in ways that will require you to take your next step and to go forward by faith. I want to thank you for your generosity, your willingness to pray and to just do what God wants you to do. Thank you so much for all that you do and how you show your faith. We're so glad that you guys were with us today. Those that have joined us online uh, want to encourage you today, if you'd like to take advantage of, there's a photo wall in this corner of the building that's set up for today, for Mother's Day, if you'd like to take a family picture, any of those kind of things, you take advantage of that. And you guys be in prayer that I would remember my clothes next week. We're so glad that you guys were with us today. God bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>